is a search in many hearts. There is a quest in many hearts for the light beautiful, for the secret which can convert our ordinary lives into beautiful lives. And I recall half a century ago, our revered founder, Sadhu Aswani, wrote a book. It was entitled, The Light Beautiful. In this book, he gives us the secret of the light beautiful. He speaks to us of a student who comes to America from Japan. The student meets one of his professors and puts to him a question. Sir, I have come here. I have come here all the way from Japan to find out if there is a secret which can convert ordinary lives into beautiful lives. The professor smiles. He says it is true, this should be the object of true education, how to make your life a beautiful life. But I am afraid I do not know the answer. If at any time you come to know the answer, you must come and share it with me. Several weeks pass by. The student comes to the professor and says to him, Sir, I come to take leave of you. I return to Japan. I go to my homeland. I go to the country of my birth. I came here in quest of the secret of the life beautiful. I am happy to tell you that I have found it. And the professor inquires. The professor asks, what is the secret of the life beautiful that you have discovered? And the student tells him, one evening as the sun was setting, I was taking a walk. I found in front of me an old man, but his face and his eyes smiled like a young man. And I asked him, Sir, what is the secret of your youth? What is the secret of your youth? And the old man said to me, the secret is a simple one, from dawn to dusk from morn to eve. I keep on helping people. I help others. And in helping others, I have found the secret of the life beautiful. My friends, Maybe there are other secrets too. But this was the secret that was placed before us. That our beloved founder, our Gurudev, Sadhu Aswani, living for others. Today everybody lives for himself. Today there is so much of sordid selfishness in our lives. There was a man, he manufactured spurious medicines. Sick people took them and many of them died. And they asked him, how could you do this? How could you do such a criminal act? He said, I made money out of it. I am not concerned with anything else. In preparing 
spurious. Maybe since I made so much of money until, of course, I was caught red-handed. Living for others is something that is conspicuous by its absence today. I remember when I was a college student, we always had those words on our lips. Can I help you? Can I help you? Is there anything that I can do for you? Living for others. Living for others. This is the fundamental teaching of the bridge builders. You can't be a bridge builder unless you have this longing, this yearning in the heart within, living for others, living for others. But today we are met together at a question answer session. As I have repeatedly said to you on such occasions in the past, questions can be asked by anyone, likewise answers too can be asked can be given by anyone because surely there will be a number of questions to which I may not be able to give adequate answers. And if at any time you find that you have a better answer to a question than the one that I have given, kindly don't hesitate to ask for the mic. Nothing will make me happier than to leave this crowded hall <laughs> having been enlightened by your wisdom, by your experience, by your knowledge. Thank you, Dada. Dada, before I ask the first question, I want to say that you make our life beautiful. <laughs> so continue being there for us, blessing us, and helping us. Thank you, Dada. The master does it. He is in front of us. The first question for the evening is, Dada, I believe in karma and strongly believe God to be a source of energy and power. But religion is a man-made concept and it is our fate that decides our religion for most of us, depending on the family we come from. Who would then, in this case, make a better human? A pious person or a person who treats all life equally and is a true humanitarian? Even as there are different spheres of knowledge, there are humanities, there are languages, there are study of economics and politics. Even so, there is a study of the inner life of man. And there are some who take to this study. Though they are the ones who get a knowledge of the inner self. Remember, within each one of us, there are two selves. There is the outer self, there is the ego self, there is the self of passion and pride, of lust and hatred and greed, of resentment, of ill will. This is the ego self. Our difficulty is that we have identified ourselves with this self. Therefore, at every step in every round of life, we make mistakes. But there is the other self, the true self, the higher self, the inner self. This self is our true self. If only we make a study of this self, we will not err. We will be 
on the safe side all the time. There are people who have made a study of their inner self. We call them sages, we call them saints. And they are there to help us. In our period of difficulty, we go to them. They don't hesitate in helping us. They are the true helpers of humanity. They are the ones who give religion the shape that religion has. Yes. Out of their knowledge, which is born of a study of the inner self, they give us principles of religion. Is that all right? Pranam Dada, if parents have a difference in opinion in bringing up their children, if parents have a difference in opinion in bringing up their children, what should be done? I don't. If parents have a difference in opinion in bringing up their children, what should be done? If you can go to a sage, he will solve your difficulty. <laughs> if you can go to a saint, a man of God, a holy one, he will solve your difficulty. Because he is the one who will tell you what is right for you. There are two pathways in life. There is satya, there is asatya. The repeated prayer of the Vedic Rishi was Asatoma Sadgamaya. Out of untruth, lead me to the truth. They are the ones who have known the truth and they will be able to guide us. Thank you, Dada. Dada, it is said that the best form of service is to feed the poor. But in cities, it is very difficult to find people who go without food. In this case, what would be the best form of service that we could render to our community? It is true, feeding the poor is a very good form of service. The poorest of the poor are the birds and the animals. They will not cheat you. In cities, cities there are beggars who will follow questionable methods in begging. But birds and animals, they will not cheat you. You can safely feed them. And better than giving cash to a beggar, better than that would be to give him a bread or a packet of biscuits or something to eat. Dearest Dada, in the process of coping with work pressure, we fail to work in the spirit of love, humility, and patience. How do we learn to cope with work pressure in the same spirit? I think therefore you should avoid. I think therefore we should avoid overwork. If there is overwork, there is a big possibility of losing love and humility and patience. We should avoid overwork. Work is only a means. Work is not the end in itself. 
The modern world regards work as an end. It is not an end. It's only a means. It's a means to self-purification. If we work in the right spirit, if we attain to our duties in the right spirit, our inner self gets purified. Work is only a means to an end. We should always avoid overwork. And we should make of work a dedication to the Lord. The Gita refers to it as Sri Krishna Arpanam. Arpanam. Arpanam is offering. We offer it to the Lord. God, I am not doing it for myself. I am not doing it for my relatives, for my children. No. I am doing it for your sake. Shri Krishna Arpanam, Shri Krishna. You remember Sadhu Vaswani's shorter speech in the English language? The best silence, the best speech is silence. The best silence is, is worship. The best worship is yagna. The best yagna is offering, arpanam. The best arpanam is Sri Krishna arpanam. Sri Krishna arpanam. May my life be an offering unto the Lord. Call him by whatever name you will. Some people recognize Krishna and the Lord as Krishna. Some as Rama, some as Jesus, some as Buddha, some as Baha'u'llah. The names are different, but the spirit is the same. When it is offered, when work is offered to the Lord, then there is no place for uh, being impatient or being proud or being loveless. There is no place. We are doing it for the Lord. We are doing it for the Lord. There was a girl. She belonged to a very rich, a very aristocratic family. She went and served the lepers. One day, a friend of her father happened to pass by that leper colony. And he found this girl doing the work of cleansing the lepers. You, you, you know, pus comes out of the skin. And, and he said to the girl, I would not do this work even if I am given a lakh of rupees. The girl wore a locket. She took out a locket and she said, Sir, I would not do it for a crore of rupees, but I am doing it for his sake. It was a locket of Sri Krishna. <laughs> I am doing it for his sake. So work should work is work when it is offered to the Lord, when it is done for the sake of the Lord. Work in Sindhi is called Kammu. And one day, Gurudev Sadhu Vaswani gave us the meaning of the word Kammu. Kammu is built up of two syllables, Ka, Ma. He said Ka is Krishna, Ma is Murali. The flute of Krishna. While you are working, you are listening, you are hearkening to the flute of Krishna. Never work should be a source of joy. It should not be a source of boredom as it very often is. When we work for the Lord, it becomes a source of joy. Dada, a guru bears immense 
bodily pain in their life. It is said they do so to relieve the bad karmas of the people around them. Is it necessary for them to go through this process? If this process is necessary, will group praying heal the Guru? Or is it that by doing so, we will be relieving our own karmas? The Guru invites suffering because of many reasons. One of the reasons is the word to which you refer today. But there are other reasons too why the Guru draws suffering to himself. Suffering is something to be coveted. There was a man of God. He prayed. He said, God, have you forgotten me? For a whole week, you have not sent me any suffering at all. Have you forgotten me? Are you annoyed with me? Have I done anything wrong? The Guru knows the value of suffering. Dada, how important is it to have a big family? In today's world, most of us find it difficult to bring up more than one child. Is it a good idea to have two or more children from a parent's point of view? Is it good to have uh, two or more children? children? From parent's point of view. I belong to a family, a big family. <laughs> we were seven children and all, and two parents, we were nine of us. But I found that the children were not a bother to the parents at all. The elder ones took care, taught, and did many things for the younger ones. And families went on growing. Rabindranath Tagore, who brought fame to India when he got in 1913 the Nobel Prize. He was the 13th child of his parents. 13th child, just imagine. Of St. Teresa, we are told, St. Teresa of Avila, the great Spanish saint. We are told that she was, if I'm not making a mistake, the 17th child of her parents. I think people will come to realize in due course that we should have big families and not small families as we have today. Today, because we have small families, we have the great problem of peer pressure. If we belong to big families, there's no question peer pressure at all. We never heard this word when we were small, peer pressure. We regarded our elder brothers and sisters as our mod models. I'm waiting for 2012. Dada, we're waiting for 20th November. When you're going to be speaking on 2012, all will be well. <laughs> is it on the 20th? Yes, the 20th. But the month is 11th. <laughs> it is not 2012. <laughs> Dada, what is the best way to celebrate one's birthday? The best way is go out, 
the best way is firstly to weep, shed tears, sit at the lotus feet of the Guru or God and shed tears. Lord, you gave me the precious gift of a whole year, I wasted it. Give me the wisdom and give me the strength not to waste time any longer. That should be the first point in your program of birthday celebration. The second is you should go out and serve the poor, the handicapped, the less fortunate. You should go out and serve. People have birthday parties, they spend thousands, they spend perhaps lakh rupees, some of the rich people. But they should utilize that amount <coughs> in bringing joy and happiness to the less fortunate ones. And the third thing that we should do on every birthday is a satsang. This is very necessary. Study the life of a saint. Study the utterances of men of God. Yeah. These three things we must always do on our birthdays. Dear Dada, in our life, what has an upper hand, karma or destiny? Karma and destiny go together. You can't separate them. Karma and destiny are like the two blades of a scissors. A pair of scissors has two blades. One cannot work without the other. The two go together. It is like the two sides of the same coin. A coin will always have two sides. You can't have one-sided coin. Dada, does past life regression help us in our spiritual path? In? Our spiritual path. Yes, yes. I, I know of so many saintly people, spiritual men and women, who have not known what it is to regress, to go back into the past lives that they have lived. Therefore, I don't think it is necessary. It may happen to some, it may not happen to others. We are told in the ancient books that when enlightenment came to the Buddha, when Gautama became the Buddha, his past births, past lives were revealed to him. But such has not been the case with the other spiritual leaders of humanity. I beg your question. Dear Dada, it is said the saints and the, it is said that the saints take over the, uh, the saints have a great healing power. It the is said that saints have a great healing, healing power. power. Some, and, uh, some saints have, some don't have at all. <laughs> <laughs> Dada, 
Dada saints take over the karmas of other dear ones. And even I believe Sadhu Vaspani did take uh, karma of somebody. Dada, whose karma have you taken? And when will you heal yourself? I want somebody to take my karma. Don't, don't, be, don't be quick, don't be quick. It's not, it's not an easy thing. <laughs> it's perhaps one of the hardest things in life, yes. Dada, with your grace, everything is possible. <laughs> Dada, uh, we actually have a last question, more than a question, it's an appeal to everyone to go wedge at least on the 25th of November Today's youth meet was dedicated to vegetarianism. It's a cause that is very close to Dada's heart. Uh, after hearing all the different views, is there anyone who wants to go wedge for a lifetime or for a month or for a year? Is there anyone in the audience who wants to go vegetarian for a month, for a year, for a lifetime? Uh, could you please come? Dada, Mr. Ashtekar is coming forward. <laughs> but Mr. Ashtekar had taken a vow some time ago that he would be a vegetarian. Are you already a vegetarian? You be you want to become a vegetarian? Okay, so you're already a vegetarian. There's he's someone who's a non-vegetarian who wants to become. He's already yes, he had taken a vow before many of you were present. <laughs> he had taken a vow. He he said that he he would be a vegetarian. But is there anyone who's a non-veg and wants to go a vegetarian? There's someone behind, I think. Could you please come forward? It could be, you can even start off by going veg for a week, for a month, for six months, for a year, whatever you like. And with Dada's blessings, I'm sure you're going to increase the duration. Roshan again. Roshan. I'll, I'll be vegetarian for a week and maybe for a month if I can. Go, go vegetarian week by week. I'm so happy, so happy. Someone's made God bless you. One day, Gautama Buddha said to the people, he was addressing a large crowd of people, and he said to them, I ask you to become vegetarians, not because of animals that will be saved if you become vegetarians, but because by being non-vegetarian, you are taking on yourselves the worst type of karma for which you will have to pay very heavily. He said, I'm thinking of you, not of the animals. Because those that are non-vegetarians, they are undertaking a very bad type of karma on themselves. Yeah. Well, because uh, being a non-vegetarian, is nothing short of being a murderer. To the animals, we are all terrorists. They go and hide when they see us. An animal comes out of his house, he's going on the street, and some human beings see him, they catch hold of him, take him to the slaughterhouse, 
Alan cut into pieces. What could be worse terrorism than this? We all are terrorists. And these holy ones, they come only to awaken us and to take us on the path of righteousness and compassion. Dada, she has a question on that phone also. Ladies, Dada, I have been a vegetarian for five years. I may have. But three years ago, I adopted two cats. Yeah. She? Two cats. Yeah. I promised them that I would be with them until the end of their lives. When I became more conscious about vegetarianism, I tried to make them vegetarian. <laughs> but cats cannot be. I have searched, uh, searched in literature and their doctor, their veterinarian, who is also vegetarian, tells me I cannot do that or they will die within a year. So, but it pains me a lot every time I feed them. It is better to die in a whole year than to kill so many in one year. The cat, the cat kills so many creatures in a whole year. But it is not for us to judge cats. Cats live in their own world. They have their own rules. Thank you, Dada. Is there anyone? If you, if you become a non-vegetarian, you become only a cat. Why do you want to become a cat? You are a human. You are a human being. Well, can, can I have my experience? I got a six dogs at home and my farm. And me being a strict vegetarian, and yeah, all my dogs are strict vegetarian. All your dogs are vegetarian. I I think uh, the way you breed, and the way you uh, you know keep them and habituate them is a level of that. My dogs are strict vegetarian, and not that uh, they are all uh, and they are huge Alsatians. German Shepherds, uh, weighing almost 60, 65 kg plus. And this my, is my dog, I gave them everything, including smashed potatoes to uh, uh, apple. <laughs> they, if they need uh, uh, nuts in the night time, when we are around, they are along with us, they also are fed the same. This is Dr. Nanda Kumar a well-known cardiologist of Bombay. He has come today to bless us and we feel <laughs> grateful to him. Thank you, Dada, for gracing this occasion with your presence. And we look forward to having a youth meet soon again with you. Therefore, we should plead always for mercy. mercy. Therefore, in the prayer which was given by Jesus to his disciples, we have the words, forgive us our trespasses, even as we forgive those that trespass against us. 
we should forgive others and pray to be forgiven. Yes. We should not keep a grudge in our heart against them. Somebody has done wrong to us, somebody has maligned us, somebody has cheated us, somebody has deceived us, we forgive them. We forgive even before forgiveness is asked. Then God too will forgive us. Somebody asked, will God forgive us on a uh, uh, exchange bargain if we forgive others will he forgive us not otherwise no god god forgives us immediately we go on the wrong path god immediately forgives us but if we do not grow in the forgiving spirit then we, the forgiveness of god does not reach us you understand what I mean? For, for the forgiveness of God to reach us, we should forgive others. Then we become receptive to God's forgiveness. God wishes to send us so many things, so many wonderful things, but we don't receive them. We lack the receptive spirit. We need to be receptive. Let us be more and more receptive. And we will lack nothing. Dada just one last announcement. Friends, Dada has blessed us with an identity in the form of a logo which we will display on the screen. This is the logo that Dada has selected for us. And we hope to use it very soon everywhere. Thank you. Bridge so builders. Yes. Bridge builders. Very nice. Heal, help, bridge. If anybody wants an improvement, they could suggest to you, yes. Thank you. Thank and you, thank Dada. you. And thank you, Ji. Will you have RRT or something? Dada, we had the RRT earlier. You had the RRT, sure. very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Then shall we break? To to thakur. To thakur, तुम्हारी कृपा में सुख जनेरे कोई न जाने तुमरा अंत ऊचे से ऊचा भगवंत सगल समग्री तुम्हारी सुतर जारे सुनते हो ऐसु आज्ञा का वे प्रभु तुम्हारी गत मित तुम ही जानी नानक दास सदा कुर्बानी सदा कुर्बानी वी रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन टू प्लीज बी सीटेड टिल दादा लीव्स द हॉल